Our message this morning comes from the book of Isaiah 59, 1-9. through 9. Listen, the Lord's, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear you call. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Your hands are the hands of murderers and your fingers are filthy with sin. Your lips are full of lies and your mouth spews corruption. No one cares about being fair and honest. The people's lawsuits are based on lies. They conceive evil deeds and then give birth to sin. They hatch deadly snakes and weave spider webs. Whoever falls into their webs will die. And there is danger even in getting near them. Their webs can't be made into clothing and nothing they do is produ productive. All their activity is filled with sin and violence is their trademark. Their feet run to the devil or to do evil and they rush to commit murder. They think only about sinning, misery and destruction always follows them. They don't know where to find peace or what it means to be just and good. They have mapped out crooked roads and no one who follows them knows, have, knows a moment's peace. So there is no justice among us and we know nothing about right living. We look for light but find only darkness. We look for bright skies, but walk in gloom. I entitled this, The Anger of God. Thoughts to ponder as we begin the message. This part is taken from the daily devotion, The Power of Prayer. If the work of God is progressing, and we are growing in holiness, then some perplexing questions arise. If the church is making advances on the lines of deep spirituality, if we are praying people, and if our people are hungering after holiness, why do we have so few mighty outpourings of the Holy Spirit? There is only one answer, for this state of things. We have cultivated other things to the neglect of the works of, the hol of holiness. We have permitted our minds to be preoccupied with material things in the church. We need to focus our eyes on the Lord so he, that he can pour his spirit out on us. I stumbled onto this article that kind of sums up today's attitude in some people looking for a reason not to come to church. And it's titled, Excuse to Leave the Church. And I kind of looked at that and I kind of squinted, what? But listen to these words. A lady went to the pastor and said, I won't be attending church anymore. He said, may I ask why? She said, I see people on their cell phones during the service. Some are gossiping. Some just ain't living right. They are all just hypocrites. The pastor got silent and he, and he said, okay. But I can ask you to do something for me before you make that final decision. She said, what's that? He said, 
take a glass of water and walk around the church two times and don't let a, any water fall out of the glass. She said, yes, I can do that. She came back and said, it's done. He asked her three questions. Number one, did you see anybody on their phone? Number two, did you see anybody gossiping? Number three, was anybody living badly? Here's what she said. I didn't see anything because I was so focused on the glass so the water wouldn't fall. He told her, when you come to church, you should be just that focused on God so that you don't fall. That's why Jesus said, follow me. He did not say, follow Christians. Don't let your relationship with God be determined by how others relate with God. Let it be determined by how focused you are on God. I thought, bingo. You know, I can relate with her. There are people who look on their phones and you'd be surprised some of the stuff they're looking at. Some of them have a Bible app on their phone and they're looking at the Bible. Some of them are not. So should we be worried about what other people are doing or should we be working on our relationship with God? In the book of Isaiah, God is working to get his chosen people to turn from their wicked and sinful ways. He wants them to turn back. I know that this is where God has led me today to this section of scripture for the message. God was upset with his people of choice because of their behavior. They were doing all kinds of sinning just like we are today. In verse 1 of our reading, Isaiah introduces the kindness of God saying, Listen, the Lord's arms are not weak to save you, nor is his ears too deaf to hear you. He's waiting, arms open wide, saying, Lord, forgive me. And all we have to do is hear him calling and say, I hear you. He does not turn a deaf ear on us because of our sinning. He's waiting for you to recognize the fact that you are sinning and that he is wanting you to come back to him. In this reading, God has been off offended by our sins. But Isaiah is saying, but he is not so weak that he cannot lift you out of it. Nor is he deaf to the point where he can't hear you calling on him. It's up to us to recognize the fact that we need something more than ourselves to fight against this world's ugliness. In verse 2, he is telling them as well as us that it is because of our sins that he has caused to turn away from us. He hasn't left us. I want you to understand that. Even as we sin, he hasn't left us. He's waiting for us to turn from our sin and come back to him. In verse 3, he tells us the kinds of sins that are being committed. Your hands are the hands of murderers. 
and your fingers are filthy with sin. Your lips are full of lies, and your mouth spews corruption. Today we have heard of many disasters that have hit our, this country and all over the world, for that matter. People trafficking, others calling God that he is a liar, saying I should be the opposite of what God has made me. Some who have taken the lives of those who cannot speak for themselves because they are in the womb. And have no fighting chance to say stop or no because mom soon to be says this ain't happening. This is just a few of the sins that are happening around the world today. In the New Living Translation Bible, the commentary of the verses 1 through 15 say this, Sin offends our holy God and separates us from Him. Because God is holy, He cannot ignore, excuse, or tolerate sin as though it didn't matter. Sin cuts people off from Him, forming a wall to separate God from the people He loves. No wonder this long list of wretched sins makes God angry and forces him to turn away. People who die with their lives in, of sin unforgiven separate themselves eternally from God. God wants them to live with him forever, but they cannot come into holy presence unless their sins is removed. Have you confessed your sin to God? Allowing Him to remove it? The Lord can save you if you turn to Him. Israel's willful persistence rebelled rebellion, Isaiah 59 through or 56 through 59, created an environment where even those trying to be good were attacked. Sins fill the vacuum left when God's truth no longer impacts society because the world doesn't accept God's standard for truth. Christians can be attacked for firmly holding to on to what Scripture teaches sometimes being accused of being judgmental and self-righteous, we need the moral foundation that comes from God to work on for justice and against sin. We are reminded carefully about our readiness to judge others and their faults. Matthew 1 through 5, 7, 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not be judged for with what judgment you judge you will be judged and with the measure you use it will measure back to you and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but not consider the plank in your own or how can you say to your brother let me remove the speck from your eye and look a plank is in your own eye hypocrite first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye in other words don't be freely willing to look at somebody else's problems until you look at your own We as believers, Christians, should be very careful on what we see others and want to criticize them for their wrongs. We must take an inventory of I and me before we attempt another when it comes to their actions. 
<clears throat> we should also judge ourselves more harshly than we judge those around us. Because we may have been the one who impacted them who we intend to judge. And we impact them because of what we may have seen, what they may have seen us do or say in any given situation. None of us can say that we are without sin. Romans 3.23 says, For I have, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there is hope. In all this, Isaiah wraps up this chapter in verse 21. And this is my con con covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit will not leave them, and neither will these words I have given you. They will be on your lips and on the lips of your children and your children's children forever. I, the Lord, have spoken. In other words, he's just saying, turn to him. He says, I'm here. I'm listening. And I can lift you out of your troubles. I've seen many things that cause me to think that the Lord is angry with the people of these times. There have been numerous tornadoes in it and that have left destruction in their wake. Hail has wiped out crops, floods taking away parts of and, and or all of villages, taking many lives with them. And I close with this comment. There is one mountain that is being built that needs to be stopped and torn down. It is the mountain of evilness that is rising faster than a loaf of bread waiting to be baked. The only way to stop it is to say no to Satan, and I emphasize the word no, and yes with emphasis, to the Lord of all creation. One page earlier, it's 364 instead of 360. I got the wrong number. It's, yeah. oh, it, it's close. I said just one page. <clears throat> 